right, all right, all right. I am back. I hope y'all are back. Let's, uh... Let's get to it, right? Last candidate of the day. We got Ashley Colum. Calling people slurs on the internet isn't very pop, isn't very gamer of you, and saying pockers to numb the pain. She is a professional gamer. She's 24, and she uses she/her pronouns. Let's get it. I'm still trying to click through everything except for the actual game. There we go. <laughs> We're being the most uh, popular uh, bit witch streamer in Jersey City, you don't exactly have the IRL popularity to match. You are well aware that you're running low on relationships and friends lately, but that doesn't mean you can't try to shake things up for yourself, right? You should have just enough time before your next stream to meet up with somebody, but now that you've got your phone out, you're sorting through your options, you're starting to realize this might be harder than you expected. Sure, you've got plenty of names in this list, but, well, she was a friend of your ex, and he was a friend of your ex, and, oh, uh, they might fit what you're looking for after all. Thank you. If you can't see, it says DM Dad, and it's got a D20 on it, and I love it, because I am, in fact, a dad. Um, not literally, but spiritually. On, ev on all levels, except physically, I am a dad. Uh, oh, they might fit you were looking for, after all. With a huff, you and just the barest amount of hesitation, you open up their contact and press send. Uh, oh... Is Ashley a lesbian? This is the first route we've done that hasn't had Malik as the default option. We've got Isabel and we've got Yolanda. Thought this was gonna be quick, but maybe it won't be because we will be playing both. All right, so let's go with Yolanda because I ain't seen her yet. So we got Yolanda, poetic bitch has got the best pussy, hairstylist, 28, um, Aquarius, I think that's what that is. Uh, and she, her. Look, all of my knowledge of, like, associating symbols with, uh, zodiac signs, I read Homestuck, and so that's the bare minimum of knowledge that I have, so I could very well be wrong. I'm assuming that's an Aquarius. I don't know. Um, we're gonna go with Yolanda. Hello? On Knowing Better Now. The sun is setting and you are desperate for some sort of change. Your exhaustion is hidden behind layers of makeup. You are in a once familiar part of town now filled with bike shops, sister tea places, and other seats of gentrification. Blech. You feel like a hypocrite. You moved here for college and never left. You're not sure you want to leave just yet. You've been here for years now. This is home. Anyway, that's enough. I mean, moving someplace is not the same as gentrification. Let's make that incredibly clear. Your name is Ashley Colum, and you barge into the nearest hair salon because you're desperate for change. Something to prove you're a new woman. Pisces, there we go. Thank you. I knew it was one of the fish ones. Uh, someone who let boys or friends hurt her again. It's been about a week since you got dumped by a boy and all your friends, and you know there's something wrong with you. Why not start a surface level change before getting deeper? Time for anxiety haircut. You start the, you into the salon without thinking. All the stylists and patrons are black, and you know you've made a mistake. You so don't belong here. How can I help you? You look and immediately recognize her. Um, from the way her shoulders stiffen and her eyes widen, she recognizes you too. Yolanda Cerise is standing in front of you, and you have no idea how you're supposed to act. It's, uh, been a while. Sorry to invade your space like this. You genuinely feel bad. Lilana was part of another friend group that also blew up in your face a few years back. The two of you weren't close, but even so, you're uncomfortable seeing her in person again. You only met her in person once and uh, one time. That was enough to seal the deal. It's no problem. What brings you to this part of town? At least someone seems calm and not totally flustered over this. Not cool, Ashley. I was just wondering if I could get a haircut, but I realize I'm attached. Well, that was someone honest. Go you. God, you want to grow in just thinking that. You've got to bring your A-game here no matter how awkward it feels. I get it. It takes time to want to change. That's a loaded statement. Anyway, how have you been? It's been two years, hasn't it? Two years, 11 months, and six days. You 
go through a lot of friends and you got a habit of keeping track. Woof, uh, honey. Maybe you should go to therapy, babe. Uh, you do this so often you've got the pattern down. You get with the next, you spend a few months together, his friends become your friends, and everything goes sideways after that. Yeah, it's been a minute. I've been good, though. Opened up this place last year, and I've been here ever since. Ooh, she owns this place? Good for her. Oh, yeah, you mentioned you wanted to open up your own salon. I'm happy for you. You are. You really, truly are. She talked about it all the time on chat, gushing about, gushing about how much progress she made toward getting the proper loans. You were jealous of her, but you did your best to hide it. You might be a somewhat shitty person, but you tried to suppress your ugly side. Not that it helped much in the end. Thanks. How is your streaming going? Really well, actually. I ended up quitting my grocery job and going pro. It was an easy decision. For some reason, you expected it to be give, harder to give up normal hours and somewhat guaranteed pay, but people seem to like your personality. More importantly, they liked your face. Really? Congrats. She sounded genuine, and that surprises you. Isn't she resentful after everything that happened with Isaiah? I mean, I'm assuming that's Isaiah, but I've never seen it spelled like that. She should be. They were pretty close last time you checked. Should you even ask her about it? Oh, darling. Oh. So, what we have learned is that Ashley is a disaster. Let's get in it. Are you being funny or what? Because if this is a joke, I'm not laughing at you. Uh, who can blame you for being a little defensive? The last time you and Yolanda talked, she wasn't exactly on your side. After all, who would blame good boy Isaiah? Uh, he was kind to everyone around him and you were nothing but a stone cold bitch. Yeah, and you're being one again now. Bruh. Okay. Let's get into it. Ooh. Uh, she dresses for you sh to sit and you shake your head. She sits instead and visibly relaxes. This must be her first break all day. Now, let's talk. Why wouldn't I be happy for you? You know why. No, you have to articulate. You have to communicate people that you're having a problem or else this happens. Your voice comes out harsher than you intended. You're not exactly sure how to handle the situation or why you're not leaving, but you need to know. I cut off Isaiah. Maybe it's Isaiah. What? I don't think you were good to him. No, but I could tell from behind the scenes that he was much worse to you. I take that shit seriously. You deflate. Your shoulders slump and you crouch to the ground with a groan. When did you cut him off? About a month after y'all broke up. I realized shit was wrong way too late and it's one of my biggest regrets. It doesn't have to be. He's still awfully charming. I can't really blame anyone for preferring him over me. I mean, last I checked his social media, uh, last I checked his social media nine months ago and he, uh, Seem to still be with all our old friends. Don't do that to yourself. It ain't worth a thing. You know that, but it's hard not to. Back when you were with Sin, you constantly checked up on Isaiah to prove yourself because you were doing to prove yourself you were doing better. All it did was put you in a shitty mood for the rest of the day because you always seemed to be thriving while you were just surviving. Go to therapy. Easier said than done, but seriously, I'm done worrying about him. I have another ex to think about now. I work with girls like this. You stand back up and Yolanda gives you a sympathetic smile. Are you okay? You shrug. You could be better, but you're starting to get somewhere. You've made one friend so far. It's still a new friendship, but shouldn't that count for something? I'll survive. Zen wasn't worth the year I spent on him anyways. Now that's the spirit. Zen could be sweet when he wasn't basically being an idiot. Eventually, though, that stopped being charming and started coming, started becoming really annoying. You can admit that much. Thanks. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's... It's nice to see you again. I get it. Not gonna lie, I was a little apprehensive when I saw you. Uh, I figured you'd still think I was, 
I figured you'd still think I fuck with Isaiah. It might be. I, I'm gonna go with Isia. Isia. I did, so I'm glad you cleared that up. It's good to know there are some still some decent people in the world. Considering how many people cut you off in your lifetime, you're actually relieved. Decent people still exist and want something to do with you. Who'd have thought? I try to be. I really do. I don't need the validation so much anymore, but it's still nice to hear. Makes sense. We all need our ego strokes sometimes. I can't picture the old Ashley saying that. Really? Really. With Isia, you were so much more... Hmm, subdued? She's not wrong. You were definitely less outspoken back when you were still with Isia. You were fairly confident until you dated him, and now it's like you never did. Uh, for all his ins flaws, he helped you there. You'd almost be grateful if he wasn't such a stupid prick. I'll take that as a compliment. You honestly want to snap at her for that. What does she know about suffering like that? About always being less than someone? About being reminded of that inferiority constantly? You are not the only person in the world with problems. I feel like the common denominator here is you, honey. He knew he would never understand your pain. Okay, so I thought the description of uh, saying poggers to, uh, to dull the pain was like a joke. But we, we really out here, huh? It was one. Honestly, I feel like you've mellowed out. Yolanda definitely seems calmer, more secure. It's a soothing presence to be in, especially since you've been feeling so lost. Thank you, I'm trying to settle down. Now, being a business owner is no joke, but then being a professional gamer doesn't sound easy either. It isn't, but it's worth it. Will you say the same for your salon? Definitely. Say, are you interested in poetry? If you remember one of your exes used to write shitty poems, and you guess that about summarizes your experience and fondness, or lack thereof, with regards to poetry. Usually you're too busy working or gaming for fun, which is usually an extension of working or doing anything else, like uh, everything else it takes to keep yourself afloat. You suppose her poetry was probably better than his? I mean, it's nice, I guess. I remember you saying you wrote some. You barely do, What? so that wasn't, wasn't anything specific or revealing about her poems, but she mentioned only sharing it with significant others, and that to you was worth remembering. She was the opposite of that ex of yours, at least uh, as a writer. Poet? You have a good memory. I swear I only mentioned that once. Thanks, but why do you ask? You see, I'm hosting a poetry event in two days for youth around the neighborhood to share the truth. I was wondering if you wanted to come, or maybe we could grab dinner and catch up while it's happening. My colors should be here to supervise. That would be really nice, actually. You'd appreciate that a lot. You're not gonna lie, your thoughts on the Yolanda were few and far between, but you can tell she's changed. She'd like to think you've changed, too. Yeah, I'd be down for that. Uh, I'll probably be streaming during the event itself, but I'd like to get dinner afterwards. Sounds good to me. Do you still have my number? I don't. Could you plug yourself into my phone again? You open your contacts app and let Yolanda plug herself in. I save myself as a contact. Uh, when are you usually done streaming? It depends. I try to finish around 8. I'll text you when you're done streaming. That works for me. There's no way to keep your skills without constant practice. You spend the better week, of, part of a week moping, and you haven't even recorded yet. That's a good thing Yolanda offered a text first. You know yourself and would forget once you get yourself in the zone. Bye, Ashley. I hope to see you around. Yeah, me too. You find your way back home. Your tired body quivering with anticipation. Sadly, you have shit to do. Ooh, look at that gamer setup. You boot up your rig and pop in a frozen pizza in the oven while everything loads. It's not that you can't cook, but you never liked cooking that much. At least, not as much as you love baking. Baking was your thing, and cooking was ends. It was something he was surprisingly good at and that he liked to do. Not that you miss your cooking. Or, not that you miss his cooking. Or, him. You miss what he could give you. Wow. You're more of a bitch than you thought. You wonder if you've gotten worse over the years. You wouldn't be surprised if you had. While you're in the middle of contemplating your own character development, you get a push notification. You wonder if it's in, perhaps groveling for you to come back, or one of your ex-friends telling you you were way too harsh, that you should have just pulled over and taken it. Well, you're done. After, Iz well, after Izia, you promised yourself that you wouldn't take anything from anyone anymore. Sounds like she overcorrected. Which, you know, I totally understand. It happens, and, uh... It definitely is a thing, and, um... Unfortunately... While understandable, that doesn't mean that it is excusable and, like I said, therapy. Therapy. Um. Whatever. Your phone won't check itself. Hey, Ashley, it's Yolanda. Hey, what's up? Just heading home from work and I was wondering if you were still on for two days from today. God, the days run together when you're not streaming. You, catch, you check your calendar and you see that you're free as long as you manage to squeeze some practice in the morning and the early afternoon. Telling Yolanda that much, though, it gives you pause. You sigh. No matter how tempting, you refuse to flake. On the first date, at least. 
yeah, I'm good with that. Do you know any places nearby? I do. Do you like Thai food? Yeah, I do. Ooh, Thai food's good. Great. What do you think about this place? Ilana sends you the address to a local Thai restaurant. You don't recognize the name and location, but the food looks tasty. If it isn't, you might have to cut her off, too. I'm done to go over there. How about we go about 6? Six? 6.30 works better for me. Uh, okay, sounds good. See you at Sunday, Friday at 6.30. See you. You toss away your phone after that and focus on gaming, but you know you're smiling and that means you're better than you were before. It's a start, and you hope it's a start to something good. You arrived just on time to the restaurant, though you worried you wouldn't be with how many ride shares cancel on you. Yolanda is already there, so they'll come fully in the waiting area. She perks up when she sees you, greeting you with a wave and a friendly smile. You try your best to smile back. Hi, Ashley. Hey, how are you? Good, good. A uh, long day today, but it was worth it to see some poets come by. I see. Do you get a lot of recurring visitors? From your brief visit to the salon, you understand why Solana would have lots of people coming and going. It's a welcoming space, one that you would have liked to get into under slightly different circumstances. Yeah, I do. I haven't been out at it for that long, but I've got my fair share of repeats. It's always good to know I can provide a space, free, safe space for them to express themselves. Uh, I'm sure that means a lot to them. You sit down next to her in the waiting area, and the hostess comes to greet you. We have a table for two over there. They direct you to the center of the restaurant and place menus and utensils down as the two of you take your seats across from each other. The hostess returns to the entrance, and you are left alone with Yolanda. At least, as alone as you can be in a crowded restaurant. Alright, where were we? Safe spaces. Those sure sound nice. You sound bitter, and you don't try and cut that bitterness with a smile. You have every right to be, too, because you've never felt safe anywhere but home. Yolanda seems to pick up on this. Are you okay? Uh, no, I'm not. The words come out harsher than you expect them to, but you were, you're were you not wrong about this. You should be upset that she found something that you couldn't um, and that she's lucky enough. Uh, well, if you want to talk about it, I'm here. But you're going to whine about it. I'm not about that. Good for her. You desperate to blow up to cause a scene, burn another bridge. She shouldn't be talking to you like that. You don't pe tolerate people talking to you like that. You always fall into the same trap of assuming your friends are your safe space. That a safe space can be a person. Thankfully, you know better now. But you should swallow your pride. Save it for later. You're trying to make a good impression right now. Anyways, about safe spaces. They're important. I think for the I think it's okay for them to be people as well, if that makes sense. It doesn't, but you hold your tongue. You don't want to show your vulnerabilities so easily, even if even though she's known you at your worst. That actually makes this whole process harder. I see. Do you think that the salon is a safe space? Depends on who's there. She says it with such a deadpan look that you're sure she's serious. Then she cracks into a smile and you're not sure how to react. Yeah, of course I do. It's not perfect 24-7, but because I feel safe in it, I'm able to roll the punches better. You guess you could say the same thing about your apartment if you're being honest with yourself. You've really grown to love the place and you're glad you didn't agree to move in with Zen a few months back. That would have made the whole situation a lot, ugly, a lot uglier than it needed to be. I guess I think of my apartment as a safe space for me. I've never really thought about it too hard. Sort of a lie. You've thought about home being safe for you for a long time, but you've never used the term spa safe space for yourself. Defining it so simply never occurred to you, but you knew you were better off at home than you were anywhere else. That makes sense to me. I feel that way about my apartment as well. It's surrounded by things I love, and it's a space for people I love to visit. What else could I ask for? Not much else. I love having people over too. Or at least you used to. You'd always send off friends with fake with baked goods and borrowed copies of games. Now you spend most of your time indoors unless you absolutely have to go out and nobody comes over except your landlady. That woman always takes too much of whatever you bake. But I guess I only bring over close friends. You've never been to my place, right? That's a stupid question. You know she's never been to your place. The two of you were never close enough for that. Besides, you lived with Izzy back then. You haven't seen her since you moved out and found your own apartment. Never. And I know you haven't been to mine. Maybe that'll be a possibility someday. Yeah, maybe. I think that would be nice possibly progress uh if this goes well you're still not sure if it's going to you still have your fair share of doubts about yolanda and you have to confirm the things before you decide she can have a place in your life again no matter how small it may be besides she already pissed you off a few times you should check carefully would it be cool if i asked you a weird question you can tell she's tense she probably knows what you're gonna ask you hate how nervous you seem how you're dancing around the topic of azia you heard her say she cut him off but what about everybody else to put aside I think you, I know what you're going to ask me. So this will be easy then. Are you still friends with Lucia's friends? Not at all. I stuck around with Lucia for a hot minute, but we lost touch a few times a long time ago. It wasn't the only friend group I was a part of, though, and I bounced back pretty quickly. You bounced back quickly as well, though it didn't turn out nearly as well for you. Maybe it was all the old scars um, 
that held you back from making true connections, or maybe you just weren't meant for them in the first place. You suppose the only way to find out is to keep trying, but that seems exhausting at this point. I see. Thanks for answering so honestly. Now that that's out of the way, what else have you been up to? Are you still seeing Brad? You'd only met Brad once, but you didn't like him much. He was kind of a dick. Uh, not to mention he had the ego the size of the sun. You'll want to chuckle for that a bit. Um, it has a better edge to it, and you wonder if you stepped in a landmine. You wouldn't apologize, fill it, but you feel a tad guilty. I dumped his ass a long time ago. Then it was Ray, and now I'm single. Good. He was kind of a tool. You wonder if she went through something similar to you. You suddenly feel a little ashamed of your earlier thoughts, but who can blame you? Most people don't understand what you've been through. And you're used to that. You're the only one who can defend yourself, and you will speak out if you feel you've been wronged. You're interrupted by a server heading your way. Are you ready to order some appetizers? Do we want appetizers? I'm good. Have you looked at the menu? You haven't, actually, so you take a quick glance and pick something you think you might like. I'll take the garlic pork. Are you kidding? I was gonna get that. She's smiling, though. Clearly, uh, pleased you two have similar tastes. So two orders of garlic pork? Yep. Yeah, thank you. The server leaves after that, and you turn to face Yolanda again. Now, where were we? Brad being a tool. Right? I wasn't sure what was going on with me, but he wasn't good for my mental health. That's key, you know? That makes sense. I've never thought about it like that. You've always gotten boyfriends because you thought they'd be good to you, not necessarily good for you. It never occurred to you that there was a difference. Woof. Well, how have you thought about it? Uh, shit. How do you respond to this one? You've always thought about relationships as transactional, but necessary. You haven't been with that one for long, and you wonder sometimes if you're dependent on them. You've been in that cycle since you were 14, and this sudden realization with a possible old friend turned new doesn't make you happy. Yolanda can probably tell you're thinking too hard about this because she looks increasingly concerned. Ashley, baby, go to therapy. I feel like I need to go back through and keep account of every time I've said go to therapy during this route. You can't manage to say anything. Your mouth goes dry and you look around. It's not like you get this nervous. You don't know what's wrong with you, but this isn't it. You need to get over yourself. Are you okay, Ashley? You're not, but you don't know how to say you aren't okay. Uh, you never know how to say you're not okay, and that's why you lash out or pretend it isn't happening. That's why you blow up, why you have to explode. There's no other way to go about it. You've learned that by now. So that leaves you here. Confused, tongue-tied, and definitely not okay. I don't know what to say. That's okay. It's like that sometimes. Uh, I mean, relationships have always been a given. I'm pretty, so it's never hard for me to get a man. The thing is, keeping one's a whole different issue. I know how relationships are supposed to be. It just never works out that way for me. I feel the same way. Really? Not in every way, but relationships feel like the one thing way things go wrong in my life. Every time I think someone can be good for me, they end up disappointing me. Right? It's exhausting. Men are the worst at that. Um, sometimes I wish I was attracted to women. I hear their bad stuff. What I will say is that, yes, women tend to be more in touch with their feelings, but if your problem is with relationships in general, you cannot just throw yourself at somebody else and help do all the work for you. Honestly, it depends on the woman, but a good chunk of, uh, but a good chunk of us are more in tune with things emotionally, though dating women isn't all that good. I see. What are you thinking? You're straight. Everything about women seems better to you, but you're straight. Are you thinking about it? Thinking about what? Being with women. You have a few times out of curiosity, but it never went anywhere. They were all too nice for you, and you ended up being more drawn to something in the first place. I mean, I've always seen myself as straight. I did too, until I realized I wasn't. How do you know? I started crushing on a girl in high school, and everything clicked for me. You don't think you've ever... Go blah, 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 blah. Uh, you don't think you've ever developed a crush on a woman before, so that's off the table for you. Uh, you thought women were hot, but it's always been platonic. I... I don't know about crushes. I guess I have a lot to think about. Seems like it. And one more thing. What is it? Don't ask me to be your experiment or anything. I love myself too much for that. Good for you, Yolanda. Good for you. Uh, you might not be the best person, but you're not that blind or brand of asshole. You remember one of your friends from high school getting played around with by a straight girl and how angry you were on her behalf? You wouldn't do that with some to someone else. Would you? Good. Besides, I don't really do hookups that ever end well for me. Me neither, for the most part. I mean, they're fine, I just always feel weird after them. Besides, I'm terrified I'll actually hook up with a fan. Like, you're an empty vessel for someone else's desires. You're aware people think you're hot, and you agree with them. You just wish you could have fun without your partner putting all those awkward and meaning expectations on you. But that never happens, so for the most part, you've sworn off hookups. At least with boyfriends, you know, they see you as a person. 
Would that really be so bad? I mean, they already love you. It'd be awful. You look around just in case any of your fans are actually here. No one's approached the two of you yet, and everyone seems occupied with their food. You think you're safe. Don't you like your fans? God, no. I'm indifferent towards the teenagers. I was one once, so I guess I deserve a chance, but I get a lot of weird horny Gs no matter what I do. I mean, I get it. It's kind of like customer service, right? You can't control who you get, so you just gotta make the best of it. You're right about that. If I didn't love my job, I would seriously start blocking half my fan base. Uh... The minute you say it, you realize you've made a mistake. Half is too generous. You'd block at least three quarters of your fan base. Yolanda, however, seems amused at your statement. Which is a good thing, you suppose. It means you can still be funny. I feel you on that one. If I didn't have a respectable business to run, I'd be pulling some of these bitches out by the hair. Running a hair salon is that bad? You usually don't pay attention too much when you're getting your hair done, so you don't know the environment that surrounds most salons. You honestly think you have better things to pay attention to. Like what? Your emotional issues? Uh, most people are nice, but folks can get mad entitled or gossips. My assistant's real good with that, but I can't deal with the shit talking. It gets to be too much sometimes, and it's always over some petty shit, too. Like what? Like talking about their man cheating on them, or some backstabbing bitch, my client's gonna backstab right back, or something about communal dick. I had an ex whose dick was communal. I only found out two weeks in. He said he assumed all relationships with him were open. That was a riot. You'd never take your 20-year-old 20 se 20 self seriously for deciding to date that man, but you got your revenge by getting into his apartment and wrecking his $400 guitar. too good or the food looks good and you're probably look a little too eager but you're hungry and oddly comfortable around Yolanda too to boot so you dig in and you watch her eat too you're a bit of a messy eater when you're comfortable but Yolanda doesn't look repulsed good right mm. thanks for taking me here I'm glad you like it she sounds warm when she says it you're not sure what scares you more the possibility she isn't being genuine or the possibility she is god you're really bad at this whole making friends who have interests outside of gaming thing at least with other gamers you have something you can talk about so, uh, how's your... Oh, it just skipped. It's good. I'm just... Poetry. There we go. Um, it's good. I'm just writing my own self-indulgent things. Uh, what do you tend to write about? Mostly about my life. I try and write personal poetry in order to process emotions, and it really helps. I've definitely written my fair share of fake up poems. Maybe that'd be a good thing for you to try. <gasps> Emotion emotional processing? Wow, concept. Will you critique me if I do? You're only half joking. The other half of you is genuinely scared that someone will read your innermost thoughts and call them trash. There's a reason you prefer to repress things. I wouldn't do that. I just think it's a good thing for you to do. Well, shit. Hadn't thought about that. You do most things with the expectation that someone will see them, that someone will acknowledge them. From your streaming to the big gifts you get from friends and neighbors, everything you do is presented to others. Even if you consider yourself a selfish person in many ways, everything you do has been for others. I'll have to consider it. I'm not much of a writer, though. That's okay. I promise. You really don't have to be. I don't consider myself a great writer or anything. It's just a nice way to reflect on things. I see. That makes sense. So, you don't share it with anyone? I share it with partners sometimes, but can I let you in on a little secret? What is it? I never tell them if it's about me, so no one thinks I'm the subject. It's my safety net. You crack a smile at that. It's funny. The fact that people who are supposed to be close with uh, wouldn't know their lover's personal poetry when they saw it. You look like you're about to crack up. Do I? Definitely. What's so funny? Yolanda smiles back at you, relaxed and open. How can people be so oblivious when vulnerability is right in front of them? I shouldn't find that funny. But you do. She totally does. She's cracking a smile right now, and you know a self-satisfied smile when you see them. You're practically a master at those. A little, yeah. But hey, there's always next time. Hopefully it works out. I hope so, too. I like to believe the one is still out there waiting for me. That would be nice, wouldn't it? You both look at each other. You feel strangely at peace. Things might be shitty right now, but there are still people out there meant for you. You hope L L Yolanda is one of those people. You take your last bite of food. After a few moments, your server comes back. How was everything? It was great, thank you. Yeah, it was delicious. That's good to hear. Are you ready for your check now? I think so. What do you think? Yeah, I'm ready. I gotta do some more practice after this. Alright, I'll be with you in a moment. The server walks away and the two of you face each other once again. You feel good about this, really good about this. I was gonna ask if you want to come over to my place, but I don't want to intrude too much. You raise your eyebrows, surprised. Really? You would do that for me? 
Definitely, but you need to pra fuck practice. I've done enough of that while I was busy pitying myself. I'd love to hang out. All right, then. What do you want to do? Good question. I was thinking we should... You go on to discuss the right range of action movies you can watch, and Yolanda returns with some artsy films you can watch. You decide on one of each, but you end up sleeping over. While you're frustrated that your skincare routine was thrown off, your happiness outweighs any dissatisfaction. You end up hanging out with her again next week, and it becomes a thing. You even come over to one of her poetry nights, and it's better than you thought it'd be. You two aren't similar at all, but it's nice to reconnect over something. Something new. Uh, something outside of the pain Isia called you both. Plus, she called you out on your anger. You might be justified in your emotions, but you aren't justified in your actions. There you go. She never babies you about it, but she's far from cruel. You could learn a thing or two from her. You realize you're doing well when you're talking to some of Yolanda's poetry friends, and you can safely say you could become friends with them, too. You're definitely more than you were back then. While you don't entirely like the way you are, you like yourself more now. And isn't that what counts in the end? You're happier now, and that's all that matters. Aww. Look at that. We love to see girls be friends. Alright. Yeah, me too. And I'm really glad that it didn't end with her like trying to like get a new relationship because like she doesn't need one right now. Okay. So let's look at last route, we've got um Isabel. Oh, nope, still trying to play on OBS and not in the actual game window. There we go. All right, Isabel. Isabel, maybe? Back at it again at Krispy Kreme. It's approximately 1 p.m. and you're exhausted. You've been awake for 24 hours already and you're taking a glare at everyone around you right now. Bitch, go to sleep. Your stream went for longer than you expected and you have another one in six hours. Your name is Ashley Colum and you're 24 years old and your job is wearing you down. It doesn't help that you have no boyfriends or friends to complain about your struggle if you've been without those for about two weeks now and it's really starting to get to you. You wonder if your life is always going to be like this, unable to keep a relationship or friendship for longer than a year. But you have shit to do, so there's no time for another existential crisis. Six hours is enough time to get a cat nap, but first you need to buy some energy drinks. Come to think about it, you can use some real groceries too. Either way, that requires a trip to the store, so you walk over and try your best to seem chipper. Uh, now that you're here, you can either make this a grocery trip or just an energy drink trip. Your patience is running thin, but your fridge is also looking awfully empty. Alright, let's see what happens if we get the energy drinks, because uh, now that we know that there are two options for things, like, hey, let's find out. You grab the energy drinks from the store, get them to the self-checkout, and leave the store as quickly as you can. You're famished by the time the stream starts, but you're a professional. You can be extra bitchy because you're hungry, and you'll probably get more reviews. You still regret your choice once everything's done, but who cares? You can get groceries another time. Haha, <laughs> look at that. I was right. Okay. You know, I'll check afterwards, but I wonder if some of the options for Anoki and Arhiki are the same. Alright. Skip Isabel. Sins. Buy some real food. Okay, fuck it. You might not get a lot of sleep tonight, but you need to eat. Your shopping trips are efficient as usual. You know your way around the store, and you know what you need to stay functional throughout the day. What you don't know how to deal with, however, is the skinny woman in the spice aisle. Paprika Rika coming to my basket. Um, you try to use your sweetest voice on this absolute weirdo. She turns around with a broad smile, not embarrassed at all. Did my singing bother you? Um, not really. I was just confused. Oh, my bad. I get like that sometimes. I'm, it's so annoying. I run some theater camps around town if that explains anything. Yeah, explains a lot. Now, could I just get... Did you want some paprika, too? It's actually looking for the vanilla extract. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, it's right over there. She points at where the vanilla extract is. You move to grab it, and she stares at you for a moment. Can I help you with something? You sound a little more irritated than you intended to, and you immediately regret it. You don't like letting strangers see your real self, even if it's just grocery store weirdos. You just look like really familiar. Do you stream on Twitch or something? How do you know? 
Oh shit, you might be talking to a fan. You're hardly bare face, but do you you do look like you got hit by a truck. Oh, my kids really like you. I mean, they're not my kids, but the kids I teach. Um, I saw them watching you when they were supposed to be at practice. Oh, I should introduce myself. I'm Isabel, though everyone calls me Issa. It's nice to meet you. I'm Ashley. It's nice to meet you, too. You smile at her, and she smiles back. She might be weird, but she has killer presence. You could use some of that in your life. Sorry to bother you this whole time, though. I was hoping things would magically come to me if I just made them into existence. Oh, I'm sorry. What's going on? Isabel chuckles sadly, and her energy seems to fill the entire store. Just work and family stress, mostly. I sing whenever I need to let some of that energy go. Has anyone told you you're, like, really kind before? People have, but their opinions never lasted. Afterwards, you were often called a nosy bitch, or shit starter, or something similar. You wish people appreciated your kindness more. Maybe that's why, for some reason, you don't want to quit talking to a stranger. Not really, no. I appreciate it, though. I make a living being rude to people, so it's nice to see my good side being acknowledged for once. Well, I'm glad I could help. You did. Anyways, if I could just grab that. Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry, I was in your way. Can I ask what you're planning on cooking? I don't really know yet, to be honest. I'm just gonna go sleep for a few hours, stream, and figure out dinner after I sleep again. I just happened to remember I was out of vanilla extract. Do you bake a lot? I do, actually. It was probably obvious for my basket, huh? A little. But that's a nice hobby. I don't really cook or bake on my own that much, so I admire that. Oh, thank you. She really is stroking your ego in all the right places. You haven't gotten that in a long while, and you have to admit it feels pretty nice. In recent times, you've been constantly treated like you were secondary, like your feelings didn't matter for some reason, especially by your ex, who tended to prioritize flight, blurting out his feelings instead of thinking anything through. Yeah, mostly my boy that takes care of those things. Everyone says I should be a little more self-sufficient, but I have a lot going on. That's kind of my life, you know. It's where my career is, and that's where I made most of my friends. I get it. I feel the same way about games. That's where I've made most of my friends. Video games have always been your main source of comfort, and you're glad you can make them your source of income, too. All that's le all you have to do is look cute and curse some people out. What could be better than that? That makes sense. Can I be weird for a second? I did, yeah, and go ahead. This whole interaction has been pleasantly weird already, so you can you suppose you can stick around for a little while longer. I know, right? Like, I've been sitting here, like, waiting for, like, where's the blow-up happening, but it seems fine so far. Um, I don't know if I stand up right now. Um, Isabel cocks her head to the side, looking away from you for a moment. Her expression is a mystery to you when she turns back around. You seem like someone with a lot of friends. Really? Uh, thank you? You're a little annoyed, to be honest. It's not her fault. She's got no way of knowing, but your friendship situation is still a sore spot for you. I can't say you're right about that, though. You smile your very best smile, even though you have approximately zero friends right now. Your most recent friend group has only lasted a few months, and it all fell apart when you broke up with your ex. You wouldn't lie, or you won't lie, it was pretty explosive, but them calling you emotionally irresponsible was a little much. But were they wrong, though? Were they wrong? You mm. No problem. I'm sure you'll get some good friends in no time. She sings that last but a little too loudly, and one of the shoppers coughs loudly. Isabel does not take the hint. You look around at the other shoppers, a handful of which are looking back at the two of you. When Isabella makes eye contact with anyone for a moment too long, she smiles at them as if seeming in public is totally a normal thing to do. You're not gonna lie, you admire her confidence quite a bit. Thank her. We are not going to be rude to Isabel. Thank you. I'm sure someone like you would be a great friend. You're laying it on a little thick, but it doesn't help that this has been the first positive person to contact you you've had in months. That was not a sentence. At all. That was a jumble of words that I put together. But whatever. It's harmless chatting. What could possibly become of it? Oh, you know. It was nice chatting with you, I guess. Uh, we should both get going, huh? You're surprised that it's actually the truth. Isabel seems to shine under the compliment. You honestly wouldn't mind talking to her again, but you don't want to seem weird and ask for her number. She stares at you for a moment before perking up and talking again. Say, I know this sounds crazy, but do you want to get coffee or something? As friends. You just seem like a really cool person, and I'd love to talk to you more. Here, I'll give you your number if you take your phone out. No, I'll give you my number if you take your phone out. Just text me and I'll see if I can reply after my stream. Isabel takes out her phone and unlock it. You plug her information into your contacts. You know this is completely impulsive, but she, and she usually isn't the kind of person you'd be friends with, but it's worth a shot. Hey, this is a great opportunity to make friends outside of your relationship. Okay, cool. I'll text you later. Isabel continues singing on her way to the next aisle. Vanilla extract was the last thing you needed, so you check out in line. 
You get back home exhausted and ready to get through the rest of your day. You put your groceries away and make yourself something to eat, take a nap, and get to streaming once you're done. By the time you're done with your stream, you see a text from an unknown number in your notifications. Hey, it's Issa from the store. How are you? You save her number quicker than you would have anticipated you would. Uh, why are you so excited to befriend her? Because you're lonely. Hey, I just finished streaming, or I just finished my stream, so I'm pretty tired. How are you? Good, just finished up with the kids today, so that was fun. Wow, she sounds enthusiastic. You can see yourself getting used to this. Anyways, that must have been weird, suddenly getting accosted by me at the grocery store and all that. Thanks for letting me talk your ear off. It was no problem. It was really nice having potential friendships again. Yeah, me too. So, about that coffee, do you still want to do that? Definitely. I usually stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday and create videos whenever my best days are... Whenever my... Whenever. My best days are Mondays and Wednesdays. Does that work for you? Yay, Monday works for me too. It's a long weekend, so I don't have to work that day. When do you want to meet? Uh, how about noon? I know this super cute cafe near the grocery store. It's called Angel Wings Bakery and Cafe. Have you ever been? You went once with an ex-boyfriend. They have good macarons, but they aren't as good as yours. Ooh, I could, I could go for some macarons. Like, some boba and some macarons right now just sounds like just peak. Uh, yeah, they have good pastries. I'm down to go over there. Okay. Your Uber driver switches a uh, grand total of three times as you're trying to get out of the house and you wind up a full seven minutes late. You're frustrated mostly because you hate being late to things. It's okay. Isabella likes being late to things too, so... Well, apparently not this time. Odd. Okay. Um, you also hate when others are late, so you're glad to see Isabel waiting for you in the back. You appreciate- you approach her with a killer smile. Hey! Sorry to keep you waiting. Uber troubles. Isabel smiles at you and waves. No problem. Come on, have a seat once you've ordered something. Isabel starts speaking normally, but breaks into song when she gets to the word have. She grins at that, clearly satisfied with herself. Everyone else around her looks unnerved at best, and you kind of like that. You quickly go to the counter and order yourself a cafe mocha. You like them sweet. And then sit across from Isabel. So, why me? Isabel looks a little surprised. Maybe that wasn't the best choice of words for a first outing. What do you mean? I mean, why would you hang out with me? You mentioned you spend a lot of time with other, with the theater people, and I'm not the type of person. Why ask me out to coffee? You have a feeling that she might be using you for clout. Wouldn't be the first time this happened. Because I was curious about you. Does that sound weird? You shake your head. Most people are curious about you in some way, shape, or form. It makes sense that Isabel isn't immune to that. You ignore the barista calling out the name on your drink, and so waiting for someone to bring it to you, you smile extra brightly and shoot them a wink when you thank them. Sorry, I was just too focused on you. You smile for extra effect, and Isabel seems placated. Oh, okay. Well, you should pay attention when people are calling your name, but I'm glad you're interested in what I have to say. Can I ask you something weird? Go ahead. Uh, are you, like, hitting on me or something? You? Hitting on a girl? Uh, no, that's not your thing. Uh, sometimes you wish you were attracted to women, and you hear they're better at pleasing partners than men, but that's not in the card for you. Yeah, Twitch streamers just, they be like that. I don't know what to do with them, honestly. Like, someone please give this girl some therapy and some emotional intelligence. Oh, no, I'm not into women like that. Why do you ask? I see. I guess I'm just not used to people being interested in my life like that, not unless they're trying to get into my trousers. I get that. One of my exes was like that. He always said we were closest during sex, as if everything else didn't count. Ugh. Anyways, are you into women? I don't really care if you are, I'm just wondering now that you've brought it up. You've had your fair, you've had your fair share of gay friends in the gaming community, and you were raised to be tolerant, so that's not really an issue for you. Maybe? I'm still figuring the whole thing out. That's cool. I hope you manage. I've heard that kind of stuff is hard. Thanks. So, what do you do other than game and bake? Uh, you resist the urge to sigh. Usually I'd hang out with friends, but they all sided with my shitty ex-boyfriend, so I'm low on those right now. You were struggling, fighting to keep your dignity when all your ex did was the bare minimum, and your friends still chose him over you. He wouldn't even listen to you when you asked him for little things, like picking you up when you were out on your own, 
before dropping unnecessary things like when you were failing well, he prioritized everything except for you. I'm sorry, I probably hit a sore spot. I swear I'm not usually like this. It's no problem, really. Anyways, I've never been much of a baker. Or a cook, really. My one big talent has always been singing. You mentioned you're a theater teacher, right? How long have you been doing that for? A few years. I work at theater camps and perform at this theater. It's called the Bella... Bella Calisis. The Bird Place? Yeah. I'll have to check you out sometime, then. When do you usually perform? I perform on weekends. Not to my own horn, but I'm pretty fun. I'm sure you'd have a good time. She sounds confident in herself, and you can't blame her. You could say the, thing, the same thing about yourself when it comes to things. Uh, you're confident in your ability to be a good friend, too, if you were given the chance. You're confident. Is that a bad thing? She looks a little wary, almost like you're about to bite her head off. As she's about to bite your head off if you say the wrong thing. You really don't want to say the wrong thing right now. Not at all. I'm confident, too. You know about what I do, right? I just know you stream games or something. I assumed it was a side hustle. Um, I wish I had the energy for something other than theater, to be honest. Uh, or, well, I don't actually. It's just nice to say that, right? Well, I'm a professional gamer. I know how it sounds, but I'm damn good at my job. You know, you sound a little defensive, but who can blame you? Your parents always thought gaming was going to be a phase, not your whole career. They're still expecting you to give up and pursue a normal job, something related to your sociology degree. You're sorry to disappoint them, but that isn't going to happen. You guys search me It's fine. It's fine. Just... I'm, I'm just dying a little. It's fine. Uh, still, that was amazing. I suck at video games, so I can't imagine it. You must be really popular, huh? She looks a little upset at that. Um... What, is she jealous? You suppose you could reassure her. You're in this to make a friend after all. Are you okay? Exactly. She what? I... Can you believe? Um... Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Sorry about that. It's just personal stuff. Absolutely not you. Not at all. Do you want to talk about it? Maybe you shouldn't pry into a stranger's personal life. You've had enough of that in your own experience. Well, it's mostly because I gave up all my own dreams to be at Broadway, and now I'm here. Not that I dislike it or anything. It's just cool to see people actually pull off their dreams. I just wish that was me, you know? I'm sure you can too, but what you're doing isn't bad on its own. You feel oddly sincere about this. It's because you think you know your dream is temporary, and it'll fall through when your looks fade and your attitude stops being cute to people. Your ex has found it at Daring and First until they realize this was who you are, full stop, no acting. So did your ex-friends until you started asking them to take your side on things? Thank you. I'm sorry for unloading this, all, all this onto you. It's no problem. I'm not much of a singer, but I guess we've got this much in common at least. Isabella seems relieved to hear you say that. You're right about that. I wanted to ask you something else. What is it? Uh, what kind of music do you listen to usually? Mostly pop music, some heavy metal when I'm feeling angsty. Needless to say, you've been playing baby metal nonstop for the past few weeks. Oh hell yeah, baby metal rocks. Um, your audience seems to like it. Your neighbors, not so much. I'm surprised, though, that she can play it on her streams without getting copyright stripes. I see. I must be pretty obvious, but I mostly listen to show tunes. There's something about them that always feels like it's going to be super charming. She starts to sing again. Okay, this is starting to get a little annoying. Leave her alone! Don't make that face. Leave her be. You leave her be right now, immediately. You mean to say something like, why the fuck are you always singing in public? But you think that would leave a bad impression. Yeah, no shit. Oh, that's just how I am. Ever since I was a kid, singing was the only thing for me. And my dad used to sing with me too, so I guess I picked it up from him. Isabel takes a visible breath before smiling. She seems comfortable telling this story. Eventually, I started singing in church, then plays and musicals, and now I'm here. That's a little run down on my singing life. I'm so happy you're interested. Most people I talk to have their own theater stories, so it's not really out of the ordinary. It's just nice to know that someone outside of that circle actually, like, cares, you know? Oh, she took that as a compliment. You didn't intend it to be, but you suppose this works. Okay, well, why are you being such a bitch? There's a difference between being, there's a difference between like just having emotional trauma and being terrible to people. Anyways, enough about me. What made you decide to be a professional gamer? 
You're not sure what answer to give her, mostly because there's more than one. The first is obviously you love gaming, the second involves your personality, you're good at insulting people and keeping an audience entertained. You learned this when you were younger, playing with your cousins. You never went easy on them and you were good at taunting them when you needed to. Some might even call you a bully, like you have a superiority complex that never died after high school. The lack of self-awareness. It was for a lot of reasons. Um, the third is that you always knew you were pretty and wanted to use your looks for something that wasn't as stiff as modeling seemed to be. Like what? Uh, like it just fits where I am in my life right now. It's something I'm good at and it really suits me. It makes me happy that I'm able to pull this off and I feel really lucky. And the fourth reason, that's something you prefer to keep under wraps. You consider yourself a bit of a private person even when it comes to admitting things to yourself. People have said it's because you're a Scorpio, but you don't really believe in horoscopes. That's amazing. I love that for you. I really do. I know we haven't known each other for very long, but it feels like we're opening up to each other. Yeah, totally. You're not so sure about that. You don't really open up to people until some time has passed and most people don't like what they see. Yeah, I wonder fucking why. Anyway, how are you doing on time? Do you have anywhere to be? That's a good question. You quickly check your phone. It's 12.45 and you wanted to get home around 2. You can afford to hang around a little longer. I feel like this is the most breaks I've actively taken in playing a game. Like, aside from the one with Arihi and, like, just, like, I had to get up from the computer because I was dying too much. Like, um, this is the most breaks I've taken. Like, she actively... I don't know. There is a difference between... How do I say this? Like I said earlier, emotional trauma is understandable, and I don't blame her for the problems that she's had in her life, but also, definitely some of this is self-inflicted due to um, inability to um, utilize emotional intelligence, um, being able to read the room, being able to acknowledge that you yourself are part of the problem. Uh, this whole thing is a disaster. She is a bit of a mess, and I understand that she's 24, but also, like, what the hell? Like, I would also not stick around for this chick and her bullshit. Like, I'm not saying that women have to be likable, especially not women characters, and so I'm honestly glad that they threw in somebody who's not likable, but also, like, the self-pitying is whew, off the charts. Um some time i just wanted to bake a bit when i got home before i got to editing wow you edit your own stuff i'd rather do that than pay someone else to do it i'm pretty okay if i do say so myself i see i should get back around 1 30 for lunch it's the first time in a while that my sisters my brother and my parents are all home or home ish i'm obviously not home right now my abuela keeps insisting that we take some time to eat with her and i want to do that family's important you know i get that i don't get to see my family too often they're all out west how many siblings do you have Three sisters and a brother. It's a lot, but we make it work. We're out west, San Diego. It's not like that's classified information, but you still still feel strange saying it to someone you barely know. Ooh, is that where you're from? Yeah, what about you? I'm assuming you're from here. Yeah, never really got a chance to leave, but I'm happy with that. I'm satisfied. You raise your eyebrows, crossing your arms over your chest. She's bluffing. You're not genuinely convinced, but that's okay. You can't say you're entirely satisfied with your life either. That's good to hear. I'm guessing you have to get going soon? Yeah, I do. It was great talking to you, though. Thanks for going out with me on such a whim. Do you think we can see each other again? You think for a moment. The truth is, your fourth reason for coming on the stream area is, well, because you're lonely. I can't imagine why. You're in a perpetual loop of it, always finding people before losing them again. If you're feeling extra vulnerable and self-hating, you admit that it's not always your fault. their fault. You're destructive to most people around you and expect too much from the people you're expected to. You're destructive to most people around you, and you expect too much from the people around you. You're not exactly the best person, but so what? You still deserve friendships, right? You still deserve the chance not to be alone, even though you have flaws. Uh, besides, who doesn't have flaws? You want more than what people... You want more than what you have, and you're ready to fight for it. To fight in order to keep it. Okay, that's a little dramatic, but circumstances are dire, and you need some kind of companionship in your life that goes beyond just streaming. You think about that because, despite everything, Isabel seems earnest and real. You want that in your life. Yeah, definitely. You can text me you any. You can text me when you want, anytime. Are you sure about that? Not to brag, but I can be quite distracting over text. How so? Well, I always have a lot to say. Some people think it's too much, but I like it. I don't mind that. I tend to just send a lot of memes. I'm not too hip with meme culture, but I'll do my best to understand them. What do you mean you're not hip with meme culture? You work with a bunch of teenagers. Wow, you really do sound like a teacher. I'm taking that as a compliment. 
You smile at that, and Isabel smiles right back. You can get used to this. Anyways, I'll see you around, right? Yeah, see you. Uh, well, at that, Isabel walks away. Just like she promised, she texts you with a picture of the flyer for her new performance. You manage to get there and still make your Saturday stream, and you get way more into it than you thought you would. After the show, you make sure to chat with Isabel and arrange another time to hang out. It's not quite the friend group you lost, but it's a start. You suppose musical theater isn't so bad, and Isabel comes around to hug and cuddle. The two of you remain unexpected friends, and this time you hope it lasts. Aww. Go to therapy. <laughs> Alright. Okay. Real quick. Um, But yeah, that's the end of the Validate Me stream. Or no, not Validate Me. That's the end of the Validate streams. Uh, struggling singles in your area. As I know that they're going to release um, a patch uh, because they just reached their first two goals, I think. Or maybe just their first. Let me check the Kickstarter, actually. There it is. They reached their first two stretch goals, so they've currently raised about $19,000, and so there's going to be DLC routes released, um, too, and then they said that as a uh, reward for reading their first goal, uh, they're going to be dropping an extra demo route this week, so as soon as I have that, I will definitely be playing that, so uh keep posted i guess i don't know i'll come back to do another stream soon i might start streaming some other stuff now that i can figure out how to stream off my computer um but i think that's about it for now thanks so much for tuning in and i hope y'all have a great rest of your day and a good start to the week